Now you've had your little rats for a few hours or a day, they're probably getting ready to come out and have their first little playtime. Um, I'd say when they're, they're quite new, don't try and get them out too soon, especially if they haven't been handled. But you can have your hands in the cage quite frequently, um, let them sit on your hands and they'll soon be running up your arm. And um, I explained with our little toy uh, yesterday, just gently scoop the babies up, hold them in both hands, you're going to cover them so that you don't injure them as you take them in and out of the house and that stops them jumping out of your hands as well. Now let's see if we can get little Blossom to sit here. I, you couldn't quite see on the video yesterday but when you pick up an older rat always with two hands so you have one round the middle and you'll support the, their back and you know there's lots of ways of actually keeping them close to you. You can hold them close to you with two hands but when you pick them up don't let them dangle always pick them up nicely round the middle and support the back legs and rats do like to be held close to you so just remember that when you when you hold your bigger rats there we go Blossom you have a treat there's a good girl um, so yes I was wanted to talk about your first playtime now a good place to do first playtime is on the sofa um, I've got cushions at the end which gives you a bit of time to get down and, and stop the baby rats running off the end or if you've got someone to help you that's even better and make sure the babies don't do a flying leap onto the back of the sofa and fall down the back. Our sofa has a ledge there and we've put cushions down the back of the sofa as well just in case anyone would, would fall off the back. But if you have a hard floor it's important to have pillows and cushions along the front of the sofa and on the edges. A bed is another place that's quite good, especially if you have a big bed, that gives the rats a bit more space to run about on, but obviously more edges for you for them to run off, so you just have to watch them quite carefully. Keep your first playtime quite short, um, just five minutes will do. It's better to have lots of short playtimes with young rats and give them a chance to have a rest in between and also build your confidence up slowly so the, the rats will get to trust you and you'll get more confident at actually handling the rats. Now we always put some toys out on the sofa, it's good to have in case your rats get spooked some tunnels and tubes that they can go and sit in. Um, the igloo which is nice and dark at the back that's really handy and if you get a rat that's very scared you can always transfer them back into their cage actually inside the tube or the house. Now I don't normally have treats on the sofa, this was just to try and keep the older rats um, here but when we progress to um, playtime on the floor which we don't recommend for rats under five, around five to six months, keep them on the sofa on the bed but we would have a water bowl on the floor and we would have some rat food on the floor for them to eat. The treats are for after playtime when we're trying to get the big rats back into their cage. For the small rats, as I said yesterday, some fruit or vegetable or the science selective um, rat food is a good uh, little treat for them. And as your rats get bigger, you can progress to proper rat treats, uh, but always check the ages on the, the packet. Some say not for under three months, um, some say not for under five months and some for not for under eight. But you can see the rats have been eating these but we have Cheerios, Rice Krispies and these are healthy reduced sugar and salt um, wheat and rice flakes which the rats quite like and they also like brown flakes. Uh, but we didn't have any of those left today so that's an example of some little treats for getting your rats back into the house after playtime. So, But having somewhere for your rats to hide in if they get spooked is always a very good idea. <laughs> and we've got little Bella here. Hello darling, do you want some sweeties? There we go. So I've showed you how picking up rats and, and talked a bit about the older rats there. Um, the other thing that I think you need to do is to get yourself into a routine for your daily, weekly and your monthly cage cleaning and also for your daily play times. Your rats will get to wait for you, they will get to know what your routine is and if you deviate they'll be all clinging to the bars of the cage after a few days wondering where you've got to. <laughs> so I would always say um, check on your rats at least twice a day just to make sure everyone is fit and healthy 
because rats get sick very quickly and you um, need to get to a vet sooner rather than later. So one of the first things that we do when we get our rats is we will register them with the vet, even if we haven't chosen names. And we will choose names for our rats and as we're holding the rat we will constantly tell them they're good girl, good boy and tell them their name. So constantly repeat their name. So we'll be saying, good girl Blossom. Blossom's such a good girl. She's poking around for her favourite treat in there. Look at her. Blossom, you're being a piggy. Look at you. That's really not good. We only let the rats have extra treats when they're older, um, not when they're little. Um, I think the other thing that we we probably mentioned before is we always wash our hands with a mild soap, um, such as simple soap, so not an antibacterial one at all. But that's to remove any cleaners or food smells that are on your hands. Um, rats are going to nibble your fingers when you first get them, whether they're babies or older rats. Now this is because they're getting to know you, they're trying to see whether you're the tasty treat, um, and they're, they're just getting used to your smell and your taste. Now, even if you wash your hands, they're still going to get your, the smell of you off of your arm, but if they smell food on your hands, they're more likely to give you a little nip because they're going to mistake you for something nice to eat. So that's the reason we do the hand washing. Um, really, I think the best thing is frequent gentle handling of your rats. Um, if your rat should jump from your hands, never grab them, squeeze them or chase them. That is either going to injure them or spook them out. So sit quietly and um, they should come back to you eventually. You can tempt them back with um, you know, one of the, the treats here. And um, if they go onto a, under a cupboard or something, we find the best way is to get one of these tubes and to lay that on the floor next to the rat and the rat will eventually crawl into the tube. You can put a treat in the middle then you can pick the tube up with both hands over the ends and you can gently put the tube into the cage and release the rat back into the cage. But never move furniture or anything. We have two videos on keeping your rats safe at playtime which will give you lots of hints and tips um, on rat proofing your home and keeping your rats safe. It's better to prevent accidents than to deal with an injured rat. Um, rats, you know, only slight bumps and, and falls, not even from very high, can actually injure or even kill a rat, so please just be careful with your rats. And the other thing I'm going to say is that you need to um, maybe find out the signs and illnesses of, uh, signs of illness, sorry, in rats and some basic first aid. Anything other than a scratch uh, for an injury, you really probably need to see the vet. I don't believe in treating um, animals yourself. I really think you need to get proper medical care. Once you're experienced, you'll get to realise um, what actually is an illness that needs to go to a vet. But when you first get your rats, you really need to take advice. So there's some forums I'm going to put the names up for which can help with symptoms and advice of when to call the vet. But you need to look out for any signs and act fast. Something that can be a real problem is breathing problems and wheezing and sneezing, which can easily turn into pneumonia, which can be fatal. But sneezing can also be irritation from dust in bedding. But if your rat has other uh, signs of illness, maybe they have the porphyrin, the reddy brown discharge around their nose and eyes, that's illness probably rather than irritation. And that can also be a sign of stress in a rat. So it's just something to look out for. It's a common indicator of illness. So some other things are the coat could look very rough and sort of puffed up. And that's, that's a sign the rats aren't feeling well. They can be aggressive to you or to other people. They can sit all hunched up with their eyes half closed or closed. Uh, they, you can see that heart beating irregularly or rapidly. And things like that, heavy, anything obviously with bleeding um, anywhere that's not, you know, any sort of bleeding apart from a minor scratch is going to be something you need to see the vet for. Uh, if your rat's stomach suddenly swells up, that could be fluid, which could be a heart condition, so you need to see the vet. If their stomach's all shrunken in, this could be dehydration. And also watch out for incontinence if they are just dribbling urine everywhere. 
um, and constant itching or scratching which has got lots of different illnesses it could be so I can't tell you every single thing which is why I suggest going to the online forums be um, do be sort of aware that not all advice is going to be good advice I've read some dreadful things that I just know as soon as you start reading them that th this is not medically based and I'm not an expert on any medical conditions I just know the things that I've come across over the last 14 years so be sensible if something sounds like it's rubbish then get a second opinion really from your vet is the best place if you have a good breeder that you trust that your rats have come from that's another place um, also places like the RSPCA and the PDSA in the UK and I don't know the names of the, the similar organisations in, in America but I know that most countries do have some sort of charity that would be able to help with advice on animals and they often have their own vets as well for people who are on low incomes. So the most important thing at playtime, um, just to change the subject totally here, is never leave your rat alone. Make sure your room's safe. Watch our two videos. And remember that rats are never naughty. If they choose something, it's your fault for not putting it away. So don't punish your rats in any way. Don't tell apart from a little no if they they're nibbling your fingers we just say no biting and just you know remove your hand but in no way punish your rats it's not their fault they are just being rats um, and whatever is happening in your life your rats are your responsibility they're going to depend on you for everything they need and their daily care and attention so always be very gentle and kind to your rats and they'll learn to trust you and they will love you and they'll be very perfect little companions. Um, and one other thing I would say, I do get upset when I hear people say they have their favourite that they always get out first for a cuddle. You, Every rat has, has to be your favourite rat. And whatever the colour of the rat, whether they're Dumbos or Top Ears, and they're your particular favourite type of rat, you have to treat every single rat in your care as your favourite. Every rat is special. They all deserve exactly the same attention. And, um, you know, just be fair to your rats. Rats are very sensitive. They pick up on mood swings. So if you're feeling quite angry or aggressive, you've had an argument with someone, don't handle the rats until you've calmed down. But having said that, if you're upset, the best therapy is to cuddle a rat because they understand. And um, just really have fun with your rats. Keep your rats happy, healthy and safe. And I'll talk to you soon.